What's going on fellas? Will and Zach here from the Baseball Bat Bros. Today we're with the man shot by hype doing a little day in the life. You guys are going to see what it's like behind the scenes kind of in a bat bro shoot. Uh, we're going to do some exit velo testing but we're going to start out. We're here on the field. We got a pretty cool video today. We got the goods one piece versus the goods two piece. You're going to see like a real video but then uh, my man hype is going to show you guys kind of what a uh, what the day in the life or like behind the scenes of a bat bro shoot is like. So let's check it out. Uh, is is my face super like blacked out or anything? A little bit. Like Let's you got a little shadow. Sideways a little. Right there is good. Is That's decent? better. That's right, a little sweet. bit better. Cool. All right, here we go. What up? What up? We'll here with the baseball bat, bros. And today. The fans have been asking, we got you. The goods two piece versus the goods one piece. Let's get it. See, just short and sweet. All right, folks, here we got the goods two piece and the goods one piece. So we're at a point in the year where the goods and the voodoo one piece are very, very hard to find. So today we want to give the goods one piece a shot. Let's see if the $300 much cheaper, more durable goods one piece is going to be a good alternative to a bat like the goods two piece here, or even if it could be a decent replacement for the voodoo one. We'll see how that swing weight comes into play here. But here we go, fellas, the goods two piece, the goods one piece. So between these two bats, really the main difference is just the handle here. Uh, you have a two-piece hybrid with a composite handle and an alloy barrel with the goods. And just because of that weight distribution, lighter weight, heavier weight, you're gonna have a much more end-loaded build. That's your typical difference from a hybrid to a one-piece. So here we go, the goods one-piece versus the goods two-piece. Let's get it. That was off the L-screen. Let's go. And guys, really this is kind of a continuation of our does flex in the handle matter type of video. We did that Voodoo 1 versus Voodoo 2 piece and the stiffness really helped with that lighter swinging bat. But the more I'm exploring this kind of topic, does flex matter, the more I'm starting to think it really just depends on the bat and there's no conclusive answer if like a one piece or a two piece is better. See, that's off the hands a little bit. Oh, whoa, whoa. wow, oh, easy right. today. All right, so uh, some advice I have for high school guys trying to get attention from colleges. So I honestly think a lot of guys try to showcase themselves too early. You're like 14, 15 years old, 110 pounds soaking wet, you're five foot four. Like, I'm sorry, but a college coach isn't gonna really see that and be like, that guy's very projectable. Uh, especially if you're a smaller guy. I mean, like my brother JT went through it, I went through it. Wait for yourself to physically mature a bit. Don't be afraid to showcase yourself and like, and actually get noticed when you're 15 or 16 years old or something like that. Even when like I committed to the University of Utah the winter of my senior year. John committed, I think the summer between his junior and senior year. It's okay to get recruited late. Late bloomers are a thing. Scouts understand that. Don't worry about trying to like, impress freaking like Clemson or whatever when you're 14 years old, just because a lot of guys aren't physically mature at that point. Some of you guys are six foot two, 190 pounds when you're 14 years old, uh, but a lot of us don't have that, you know, genetic fortune. So I would train, eat, develop physically, get to a point where you can honestly say to yourself, I would be impressive to a college uh, to a college coach right now, and then go for it. Be patient and wait for your right opportunity when you're actually physically and your skills are honed to the point where you actually are ready. All right. Ooh, 396 one hop all day. Nice. All right, I have enough. I just want to see if I can get one out of here. Yeah. I don't think I'll do it with that bat. End of the bat. Foul ball. Is that in too far or is that good? That was money. Okay. I'm just answering. That's kind of where you want it, right? Oh, you're throwing fantastic. Yeah. All right, folks, I've not put one out of this field yet. Let's see if we can get our first here. Huh? It's a I know, yeah. Oh, that might be it! Come on, ball! No! Oh, that was peace. Short hop. See, even that was like a ball I kind of had to bring my hands in on. And this bat can freaking launch it if you get jammed a little bit. 
Not quite. Oh, there it is. All right, so a little bit about my process of how I create YouTube videos. So I really always try to go into it with just a genuine curiosity for the topic. So today we're shooting the goods one piece versus the goods two piece uh, D Marini BB core. And like, honestly, I want to know the result of that as much as the viewers. Like, it, I think this channel's successful because I'm genuinely, and like the guy, you know, the guys we're hitting with, Trace, Cam, Zach, genuinely obsessed with baseball bats and we freaking love hitting and I, I approach a video wanting to like answer a question about a bat but also just wanting to have fun and wanting to hit nukes um, but really like the process of it is making sure that like we're getting uh, you know a bunch of good hits like you got you guys don't see all the work that we put into a video you guys maybe see five swings with each person with each bat uh, we're taking 40 to 50 with each bat. Like we're making sure that we're showing you guys like the maximum potential of these bats we're hitting with. And we actually want to become like an expert of the bat. Like we know what the bat does. We want to experience everything possible. We want to get rung up by that bat. We want to hit it off the end. We want to square it up. We want to roll over some balls. We want to pop up some balls. We want to know everything you can learn about that bat. You know, especially like hit, you know, hit off front toss while we're warming up and get some decent speed uh, BP. And so you can actually see how the bat, you know, reacts. But we're honestly, the way we approach these videos, we are trying to demo the bat for the viewers. Like that's been the goal since day one. Uh, growing up, I was just looking through sporting goods stores and just wiggling bats and said, that feels pretty good. And that was the only way I could actually choose bats. And we're trying to simplify that process for you guys. Like we're trying to be people you can trust about how these bats actually perform. Like. We're being brutally honest with you guys, I swear. A lot of people accuse us of being paid off. Uh, we're not. We tell you guys what we honestly think about these bats and it's just so you, you can actually have useful information when you're going to Dick Sporting Goods because, you know, no offense, but a lot of these guys selling you these bats don't know much about the bats, so we got you. Oh, jeez. Sorry, I can't, I can't get myself to... Oh, that was so far. Like, that's way off the plate, dude. right there yeah easily yeah. oh got that let's go oh. Oh. <laughs> 390 man oh yeah. yep no way ah oh, too far left i thought you were close to the scoreboard oh Whoa. that's way out i hammered that. that one pretty good hammered that the goods one piece. Cool looking bat this year. We got the blue and the gold. This is just gonna be a lighter, much more stiff and rigid, a little bit less forgiving version of the goods. It's gonna be cheaper and more durable, so that's definitely a benefit. Let's see if it's comparable. Let's check it out. Come on! Oh, not quite, dude. I have a little more thump with the goods. And if you miss the barrel by that much, you feel it in the hands. Much more rigid. See, that's in on the hands a little bit. It just buzzes you a little bit. All right, so I think there was definitely like a season of our YouTube career that really stands out where it changed from like, okay, this is like a fun hobby that I can tack on to like my regular day job and everything to like, okay, this is like serious. And like people expect something big out of this. Um, I would say during like One Piece Bat Madness, just the amount of requests we were getting for specific content, especially, like, especially around Bat Madness. People were like, we want Wood Bat Madness. We want the Bat Madness World Series. We want Budget Bat Madness. We want you USA Bat Madness. I basically had to like come to terms with the fact that if I want to do this right, and if I want to do this well, and actually be able to be like a comprehensive source for like baseball bat information, I'm gonna need to like, maybe quit my job and do this full time. And that's what I'm doing right now. And it's a big risk, you know, like our YouTube channel could end up just like flopping pretty soon here. But dude, the way I see it, like if I can do this for two years, like that's gonna be like the best two years of my life. And if I'm helping out ball players to like, uh, like pick the right bat and you know, even if I'm just entertaining people, like that's so worth it to me. Um, and like, I don't make, a lot of you guys might think I make crazy money from this. I make enough to get by, but really not a ton of money. Um, 
and yeah, it just got to the point where I realized if I want to do this right, it needs to be like my full-time thing. So I freaking dove into it. So here we are now. Oh, that's yeah. smash, baby. Yes, sir. Oh yeah. Let's go. Right over the 376. Right over 376. See, if you get that one spot, bro, like it's almost as hot. There's just way less area for you to like barrel the ball. Yeah. Oh my! That wasn't barreled though. Oh, that looked so good. Yeah, though. not barreled. That was like off the end. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I can't get it better than that. Yeah, not quite, man. <laughs> not quite. So, uh, the vast majority of the time spent on a bat bro shoot is picking up baseballs. So what you guys don't see is this very long boring part, especially on a big field, it takes forever. Especially when you're hitting nukes, it takes a little bit longer because we have to go get them over the fence. I only got one today, but I got like three ground rule doubles. I'll take that all day. This is what no one sees. This is what, this is what the people don't see. This is behind the scenes this footage. Is gold the, content. The deep dark corners <laughs> of the bat bro. Behind the scenes bat bros. P these are like, the, meta, the plastic is snapped. This is literally just like resting on top of the legs here. That might be backwards. I have no idea. Let's see, we're getting, no, this is getting, <laughs> we're fixing this, boys. This is fine. Good as oh. new. Oh, look at that, just hanging. Hanging by a thread. All right. Oh, God. That'll do. <laughs> we're good. We're good, boys. This video's getting done. All right, so big question here. Uh, I played college baseball. I played for the University of Utah from 2012 to 2014. And people ask all the time, what are some things you wish you knew before going in to play college baseball? So number one, by far the biggest thing that I want you guys to understand if you're a high schooler or even a college guy right now, or if you're in any playing shape at all, college baseball is a long journey. Classic cliche, it's a marathon, not a sprint. If you're a college baseball player, especially during like the COVID days, you're gonna have anywhere between four to six years of your college career. And that's a long time. It might not seem like it now, but that is a very, very long time. And when you're 18 to like 24 years old or 17 to 23 years old, there is so much that happens in those six years to other people and to you. And a lot of guys go from being a skinny little wimp to a full grown strong man in those four to six years. And basically my message along those lines is don't give up. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It doesn't matter where you begin your college career. It matters where you end up. I started right off the bat in a Pac-12 school and it was the coolest thing ever and I'm not gonna downplay that. Going to a D1 out of high school is the coolest thing in the world. It's like living your dream. However, I fizzled out a little bit early just because you know I got overwhelmed by the level of talent I was playing against. I was having a hard time getting playing time. If I would have stuck it out though in hindsight, I think I would have got some good opportunities. And I've, I've seen a bunch of guys that left high school just honestly not very good. Um, and then I, I find out about them like on Twitter five years later, they're starting in center field for the Oregon Ducks or something like that. Uh, shout out to Jake Bennett. But yeah, really there's so much that can happen in those few years and you can develop so much as a player. And guys, spend those five years. If you're really serious about baseball, if you wanna make it, wait for your opportunity. More than likely it's gonna happen somewhere, but keep working. You have, again, four to six years to make it happen. It's not, it doesn't need to happen when you're 18. It doesn't need to happen when you're 17. You can start out at a not very glamorous Juco and end up at somewhere big, you know? Um, even, you know, even, you know, D2, D3 guys, a lot of the times, a lot of the times those guys end up getting drafted and end up in a really, really good situation. So again, it's not about where you start, it's about where you end up. I mean, this is just a pretty typical two-piece hybrid, two a lighter swinging, one-piece setup. You're gonna have a much more rigid, less room to work with, lighter swinging back. Smaller sweet spot, easier to swing, not quite as much juice just because it's not really as much backbone behind it, which is weird because the Voodoo One Piece is the lighter bat and a totter, whereas this is gonna be more traditional of a setup. That Voodoo One Piece is different, man. That's like an outlier in the BB Core space, I feel like. 
All right, fellas, so before we make any final conclusions about the goods one piece and the goods two piece, let's head over to the exit velo tester to see how these two are looking and see if kind of what we're speculating is true about this being a little bit hotter and more forgiving, but heavier. This being easier to control, a bit more rigid, tight, less forgiving barrel, maybe a little less juice behind it, but again, just easier to control. So let's head over to PBC, get on the exit velo tester. Let's see what these are at. And fellas, big shout out to the man, Hype Harrison, shot by Hype on YouTube. Go give him a subscription, fellas. Awesome, awesome channel. He does a lot of day in the life videos for uh, really talented ball players. Go check him out on Instagram at shot by Hype as well. He came all the way out from North Carolina That's to right. get some bat barrel footage, baby. Let's go. All right, folks, so we are now inside of Portland Baseball Club with the Rap Soto Exit Velo Tester. We're going to see how the numbers are looking with the goods two piece and the goods one piece. Let's get it. Six. Ninety-nine five. It's a good start. All right. Like it's saying that went three thirty-eight. Yeah, goods, baby. It has a barrel. It has a rattle in the barrel. These things break like crazy, but it is hot, man. All right, so some of the growing pains and some of the roadblocks I experienced um, when, when doing the YouTube grind. So number one is the most obvious one. You're gonna have people that don't like what you're doing. You're gonna have people that for whatever, dude, no matter what you do, we're doing freaking unsponsored bat reviews and people still find a way to hate. I, I'm kind of surprised, but uh, it's, it's, I find it with like travel ball dads, for example, like on Facebook. It's, or especially people that like sell bats, they don't like what we're doing. We get a lot of we get a lot of hate, and it's super discouraging, man. Especially like when people question your integrity, uh, and and basically don't believe that you're being like honest and truthful about like your life projects. Which like, I pour all my time and effort into this, and it's pretty insulting to see that stuff, and it's super uh, discouraging. But you know, for every one comment I get like that, I would say I get like 99 positive comments. So. Um, the, just the fan support has been super huge, but the negativity is something you're always going to encounter. Um, and honestly, you just kind of have to numb yourself to it and just look past it. Uh, I, you, you have to come to a point of understanding that you can't control what other people think all the time. And that's just the reality of life. There's going to be some people out there that have incorrect assumptions about you. And uh, you just kind of have to swallow your pride and realize that that's the way it's going to be. So that's been a huge thing I'm still going through right now. I just, you know, I, I see those comments and try to just ignore it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the Bat Bro fans have my back on those anyways, but. And then there's a lot of times where we just don't get views, you know? Um, I, I try to do a comprehensive, like, review of bats, and that includes reviewing bats that aren't very popular, doing wood bat madness, where a lot of people aren't even swinging wood bats. But, you know, I want to be a resource for every baseball player out there. And also, like, I want deserving wood bat brands to get exposure as well and like small bat companies because you know there, there's like big monopolies in the baseball bat world and i don't think it necessarily needs to be that way i think there's really small bat manufacturers that make an excellent product and we're trying to show that for what it is so um yeah we just try to push through really low view periods of time like right when covid hit our views just tanked so we were posting like every day every other day but um, it's just, it's so rewarding to be able to do what you love and I just push through it and try to build up a little bit of a saving so I can like grind through it if there's a really bad month or something like that. Still a little bit anyway. That was 317. Oh, that, that needs to be 100. 97.1. All right, so that's like, I got perfect barrel down the line with each. That beat about two and a half miles an hour almost. That'll even be moving. 97. All right, thanks, man. 99. Oh, 
five. Get out of here. 360. We've learned that the Voodoo 1 is pretty much superior to the Voodoo 2 piece and that the Goods 2 piece is pretty much overall superior to the Goods 1 piece. So that kind of leaves us with the question, if those are both sold out, what's your next best bet? Because realistically, these are going to have pretty similar swing weights. They're going to be very, very different barrel feels though. One of the flexiest bats in the game and one of the stiffest bats in the game. So this might actually be our best flex versus stiff test. So let's try out the exit velos between these two at least. I think we got 97 at the highest for me here and then really chilling in the mid 90s. We'll take a couple more swings and then move on to the Voodoo two piece. All right, let's move in. 94. That's touched. 91.3. Yeah, this is this is a bat where pretty much no matter where you hit it, you're gonna experience some sort of feedback or some sort of weird sound off the barrel. Uh, there's like maybe like a centimeter where it feels like just complete butter, but you're getting feedback a lot on this. A lot of people like that though. All right, my top three favorite wood bats right now and why. Um, I'm actually, funny you asked that, I'm smack dab in the middle of trying to figure that out. We are, we just got done with the first round of Wood Bat Madness. I will tell you my three favorites so far without spoiling too much. By the time you see this video, you'll actually, you, you will probably know this by now. So the Mike Trout Old Hickory is heat. Um, I honestly really like the Victus Tatis 23 still and the Louisville Slugger Cody Bellinger. Uh, those are three really excellent bats. And then, uh, gotta give some love to like, just a good old bomb bat as well. Um, super, super practical. Those are some of my favorites. And then of course, uh, sorry, I'm giving you five, but number one, it's gotta be the American Batsmith BB i13 HD. That's literally Will's custom turn model. And I think it's perfect. So <laughs> that, that's my number one. This is easier to swing than a good one piece. This is definitely easier to swing than the good one piece. Just, <laughs> whereas that would have run your hands up with the goods one piece. This is just Such a weird feeling. 88.9, so the big difference on miss hits, this is soft. This has one small area where it launches the ball and everywhere else it just absorbs kind of the impact and really like is nice on your hands and it's really easy swinging, but because of how bendy it is, the miss hits suck. Whereas like, even though you get rung up on the goods one piece, the miss hits are still gonna be like low 90s. You're getting like high 80s with miss hits on these. Whereas I feel like miss hits on the goods two piece and the voodoo one were excellent. You're still getting like mid 90s on those. All right, top three metal bats and why. So uh, you will see this over at baseballbatbros.com, but number one, Demarini Voodoo One, uh, number two, Victus Knox, and then number three, that's a really tricky one. Cause in our rankings, number three through seven, it could go any way. Uh, I think we, so I'm gonna give you a whole bunch. We have the Stinger Nuke, uh, the Meta Power, the Select Power, not in, I don't think these are exactly in order, the Easton Maxim Ultra, and the Goods. So all of those you will absolutely love if you have them. Uh, gotta give some love to some drop fives too. Uh, the Easton ADV, the Easton Maxim, the Dirty South, the Diamarini CF, just rocket launchers, man. <laughs> oh, that's trouble. 103.4. Wow, all right, you're tied, bro. We gotta get back to the good one. Yeah. All right, my favorite video I've shot for our channel. Uh, it's funny because, you know, a lot of you guys would probably think it's our most viewed videos. And like blowing, like the Quattro video has over a million views and we blew the bat up and that was super, super fun. But one, like honestly, I like the videos that turn out just beautiful, where it, it looks super good and it sounds super good. Uh, one, it doesn't even have a lot of views, but there's two that I have in mind. 
the guayabi wood bat when we were hitting with the south bat just in the thick of the wildfire smoke. That video is so, so sick. And then another one where we're hitting with the European beech wood, just the visuals and the sound is so good on that one. My favorite as far as like when we were actually filming it was probably, honestly, I would have to say the early day me, Cam and JT videos where it's us with like the voodoo and the select power and we're doing this for like some of our first times ever and we're honestly having just so much fun and like it's just like you're seeing our 100 percent authentic reaction to everything and like we're hitting the scoreboard for the first time and just losing our minds and it's just you know we're getting to hang out together so much those are probably some of my favorite memories the early days where it was just me and jt or just like me jt and cam and then got to give an honorable mention to the vegas videos our first round of vegas videos with trace and i where we had the the wood bat comparison the different price levels and then the air burner hybrid versus the goods those videos were extremely fun to make this is a tough call between uh the goods one piece and the voodoo two piece here i think for most hitters they're gonna like the voodoo two piece i mean it's kind of drastic so forgiving on miss hits but wrings your hands and a lot of people just don't like that this is also lighter swinging just an easy swinging bat that's going to really reward you if you do barrel it up so i'm actually putting the voodoo two piece in the three hole and then the goods one piece in the four hole just a very very tight stiff barrel on that all right, and one more thing that happens in the day of the life of a bat bro, breaking in bats. We have a pretty fresh uh, birch bat here. I'm just trying to put a hundred swings off camera on this thing to try to condense that wood down a bit. Uh, same with composite bats, every birch or composite bat. Um, I'm, I'm just freaking in here by myself, taking hacks. You, you guys don't see any of this, but I gotta make sure these bats are hot and ready to go so that you know we can show them at their full potential. This is a little sneak peek into uh, the new Birdman for Bat Mattis. This is gonna have to take on the old, the uh, old Hickory Mike Trout. That's gonna be a tough one. So um, we'll see. This one feels nice. This is what uh, Yasiel Puig swung back in the day. All right. So some of the coolest things that have come out of the Bat Bros and like some of the coolest experiences I've had. Uh, number one is just like you know becoming like adult like real best friends with my brother JT we just it, it made us hang out so much uh, that was probably the single coolest experience that came out of it um, other cool hitting with Adley Rutschman was one of the coolest things to see ever that guy's very very good at hitting he honestly exceeded my expectations I don't know what I was expecting but he was even better than I expected him to be um, and then another one of the coolest experiences has honestly been to see like the impact we've had on the baseball bat world like it's crazy people like listen to us which is like kind of wild and and like i'm glad because that's kind of the goal like we're giving you like our honest feedback but just like you know simple things like to see how many voodoo ones are in college baseball right now like the goods and just like you know sometimes like comes back to bite us people all like one of the most common things people get mad at us about is how much impact we're having on the baseball bat market and we're like you know, we're like bats are selling out and being way overpriced because of us. Like that's pretty crazy to see just the impact we're having. And you know, like I, I honestly think it's helped a lot more people than it's hurt. Uh, like if, if a bat gets way overpriced on eBay, like we try to tell people right away, like stop buying it. Like it's good, but it's not worth $600. So that's been a pretty crazy experience to see. But yeah, man, I like honestly, the best experience is just hanging out with the bat bros, Cam, JT, Trace, Zach, Mason, um, that, that's just, just making friends and having that kind of community. That's been the best part of that bros for sure. Oh, come on. Didn't read. That was perfect. <laughs> All right, guys, there it is, uh, Bat Bro Shoot. We kept it pretty simple today, honestly. A lot of the times we'll come out here and do freaking four or five videos. I'll bring like different outfits. You guys will think it's like a different day and whatnot. But uh, make sure you check out this video. Again, goods one piece versus goods two piece. Uh, yeah, we really try to like, you know, we, we take big rounds. We, we take a bunch of swings. Cause like what you guys see in the videos is gonna be what, like five hits each with each bat. We're taking 20 swings with each bat 
plus exit velo testing, plus some warm-up swings. So like we're trying to get a really like in-depth understanding of how these bats perform. It's not just what you guys see. Like we're actually trying to give you useful, accurate information. So, uh, so yeah, guys, that it's really like as simple as that. We're out here having a good time, like trying to hit bombs and just really at the end of the day, we do this because we freaking love hitting and baseball's fun as hell, man. And, and I, we're, we became weirdly obsessed with bats, so I uh, appreciate our man, Hype Harrison, coming out here and, uh, and covering this. Uh, you can check out our YouTube channel, Baseball Bat Bros. We do TikTok and Instagram as well. You can keep up with everything behind the scenes. We got the merch too, fellas, baseballbatbros.com. Go check it out. Thanks for hanging out, fellas. What's up, guys? I'm Hype, and I had to jump in this video real quick to tell you about a giveaway I'm doing on my Instagram page. I'm giving away a pair of cleats to one subscriber to the channel. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel you're on right now. Follow me on Instagram, comment two people under that post, and you'll be automatically entered into the giveaway. Once this channel gets to 5,000 subscribers, I'll be giving away a pair of cleats, so good luck.